Good day, my brother and sister, and welcome to the edition. Brothers and sisters, I want to share a word with you. And this word is based on a dream I had last night. What a powerful, powerful dream I had. Um, I'm noticing that um, of late, the dreams I, I'm getting are very similar. It's, it's as if the Lord is just, he, he, he is putting this message across. And this has to do with where ministries are going. I know this has to do with this ministry. This is a word for me about this ministry and my purpose. But I know that this is a word for the body of Christ. And the message that I am here to give you is that God is remembering the overlooked. God is remembering those people who are seemingly forgotten. God is remembering those people who are outcasts. God is remembering those people who it seems like are invisible to society who when we are walking on the walkways we just jump and you know we we jump over them as if they don't exist we are so um stuck up in the world that our own problems and and what we are asking from the lord that we we don't even notice them along the road when they're begging for a few cents he says i am remembering you my child i am remembering you because i have not forgotten you it is your time it is your time it is your time in the mighty name of jesus um, let me just share the dream and at the end I will interpret it and show you the significance of why God gives us dreams the way he, he, he gives them. And I'm hoping that this can help somebody out there who God is speaking to. So you can see how God is a God of details. God will give you dreams that he will give you the, 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 the spirit of interpretation because he uses details in your life that you you know the significance of all right okay so, so i'm going to this, just set the scene for you in this dream i am at the village my father's side but before i tell you the dream i want to set the scene for you usually um we have back at the village we have a very big yard and in the middle of the yard would be the house so um in the dream I enter the yard and there is a lot of people in the yard and I could tell that there is a celebration or a ceremony. Um, so I'm entering from the front and I'm passing people who are at the front of the house, the front of the yard. And as I'm walking, I seem to be intently walking towards the back. My aunts and people who know me try and talk, come to, to talk to me, but I, I, it's like I'm in, ignoring them or I don't pay attention to them. I walk past them and I'm going towards the back. At the back of the yard, behind the house, are the people who are cooking. So usually there'll be the house and at a distance from the house for safety reasons will be people who are cooking. Because they're cooking using firewood on those three-legged pots, they are slightly at a distance from the house. So there's a little bit of yard between um, them and the house. But before I even get to the people who are cooking, I notice a person who is my brother in the dream right in the middle of the little yard in between the house and the people cooking he is sitting in those metal bathtubs um in the villages if you know we grew up not having uh bathtubs inside the house so you'd have this i'll put a picture here those metal bathtubs and what you do is you fill it up with water you bath and then you take out the water and you check it out so this guy who's my brother is in there sitting in this bathtub naked while there's all these people moving about nobody is paying attention to him nobody it's as if he's not there um i know in the dream that he's disabled and i know that he is not mentally okay i then go down and i take a sponge and i start bathing him I'm, i start at his feet I put I start bathing his feet washing him I don't know where this bread came from but bread a, the crust of a loaf so the back end you know when the bread ends at the beginning and at the start at the end of the bed the cr the bread sorry the crust of the bread just appeared 
and I take a bite from that piece and I give him to bite and I put it, the, the, the remaining bit to the side and I continue to, to bathe him. I continue to bathe him. The dream ends. My brother and sister, I'm, I'm going to explain this dream and this is why I say I want you to understand that when God gives you dreams, he will use details that are very significant to you, the dreamer, that you will understand the magnitude of why the setting was that way. When I explained how the setting is and how houses are built in our African culture, you have the house in the middle of the yard. In the, when there is a ceremony, the guests, the people who are dressed well, the tent, the decorations are at the front. That's where things are made to look beautiful and pretty. The guests stay at the front. They are served at the front. They sit comfortably at the front. At the back is where all the work is done. That's where the food is being cooked. That's where the sweating is happening at the back, right? And the food is carried from the back and it's taken to be presented to the people at the front, to be served, to eat, to be joyous, to drink, to dance, celebrate, drink, and, and, and just be jubilant, and then they leave, right? But in all of this, between the people who are, are being the served ones and the servers was this person, not worthy to be in the front, not able enough to be amongst those cooking. But right in the middle, naked, disabled, mentally ill, and he was overlooked. Food came from the back, passed him, and went to the front, and nobody noticed them. I know that me in the dream was a symbol of what Jesus came on the earth to do, and that's to be of service. Not caring about the people at the front. They will try and get your attention because they think they are better than everybody else, because they think they look and smell well. They want to get your attention. But Jesus came to serve in the dream, I walk past these people trying to get my attention. And I go and I notice this person. Don't focus on it being me. The Lord just used me to come and give you the message. I had to kneel down to go down to this person's level who is down in this bathtub. And I take a sponge and I start washing him. This person who has been overlooked this person who has been sitting there needing help nobody noticing him why because it seems like he has nothing to add he can't add to the people who are cooking he can he's not worthy to be in the front to be to be celebrating dressed in the finest clothes clothes or smelling good there he is, isolated. I don't know where the bread came, but the fact that I saw the crust of the bread, the last piece, that's what God was trying to show me. I had a bite and I let him have a bite. It was sharing the last piece and then continuing to wash those people. This is what the Lord is saying. This is where ministry is about to go. It's not about the people in front. It's not about me sitting in front of the camera, the people sitting on the podium who are dressed well, the people who smell well, the people driving the fancy cars. It's not about that. It's about service. God wants us to serve his children. God is giving us all he's giving us within the body of Christ so that we can be like what Christ did to us. Remember when Christ washed the feet 
in John 13, Jesus washed the feet of the apostles. This is what we are meant to be doing. We are not meant to be holding our head so stuck up in the clouds, thinking we are better than other people, looking down on other people with our nose held so high that we don't even notice them when they need our help. Christ's ministry was a ministry of service. I want to quickly read something to you. Um, and I want you to go and read all of it. Go and read Acts chapter 6. And I'm just going to read a few verses. I'm going to just read a few verses from Acts chapter 6. It says, Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenites, Hellenists, sorry, Hellenists, I may be pronouncing it wrong, arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. It is not right that as God blesses us, we forget those people who are in need of his love, of his word, of the prayers, of service in the mighty name of Jesus. God is going to change that. God is changing that. And it begins with you. We say we are the body of Christ. He came on the earth. He ascended back to heaven. We are supposed to continue the ministry on earth. That is our work. So my word to you, my brother and sister, let it not just be about the, the people sitting on the tables, serving them, giving them all the food, and, and on the way to them, passing the needy, skipping over them like they don't exist. Why? Because it seems like they have nothing to add no value to you. We are all created in the image of our Father in heaven. He doesn't discriminate against us. Remember your brother and sister in need. Service, because God right now is remembering those people and he wants to use you, he wants to use me to be of service to his children who right now go to bed crying, saying, God, why am I even still alive? Why do you keep me on this earth? Just so I can just keep turning my head. I turn to the left. I see them in their fine linen and perfumes. I turn to the right. I see the food being cooked. I just keep moving my head back and forth. The food is passing me. I'm dying of hunger. That is not the God we serve. My brothers and sisters, I hope that this word will bless you. I hope that it will move something in you. There are so many lessons to learn from this. But I pray that the Lord our God will move something inside of you so you can know what it means to be the body of Christ and what you can do by being of service to another. It doesn't require money. Let's stop overlooking the people who need to see Christ in their life. All these things I say in the mighty name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.